Hello everyone, and welcome to a presentation on the sociology of embodiment for the class Sociology 626 Applied Sociology. This presentation is by Jose Olivas Blanco and Hannah Jones. So we're going to meet the team, we're going to do an introduction, then three sections, one on the history of embodiment, one on the analysis of the current state of the sociology of embodiment, and finally, prominent research in the field. So here we can see a painting by Salvador Dali, and I think it's an interesting representation of embodiment of the body and how it moves in the world or is static in the world. Um, and here we're going to begin on the history of embodiment. When thinking about the history of embodiment and the history of the sociology of embodiment, we have to first define what embodiment is, and we have to think about why sociology for embodiment. So according to Merriam-Webster, embody is defined as to give a body to, to deprive of spirituality, to make concrete and perceptible, to cause to become a body or part of a body. And now what is the sociology of embodiment? Adelman and Ruge described the sociology of embodiment as contemporary sociology has developed new perspectives and frameworks for understanding the body as a social and cultural construct and fundamental element in material and symbolic processes of power and conviviality. So we see here that sociology and especially contemporary sociology think hard about what embodiment is and these different processes that go into giving meaning to a body and uh, giving symbolism to it. Like many fields, embodiment is multidisciplinary and sociology has contributed to thinking in other fields and vice versa. So there are other disciplines that this connects to like philosophy, psychology, neuroscience, queer and feminist theory, critical race theory, disability theory, and within sociology, the sociology of health and illness and sports sociology. And all of these think about the body in different ways, have different things to contribute, and they make up a sort of team when thinking about the body and embodiment. Here we see three important and pivotal figures in the history of embodiment. So first on the right hand side we have John Dewey and uh, he was one of the most important philosophical figures in the intellectual movement of embodiment. As Scorberg states, the Deweyan notion of embodiment places the human organism fully within the environment, not apart or aloof from it. Then we have George Lakoff right in the middle and he was a pioneer in empirically studying embodiment, uh, especially through linguistics and his book, Metaphors We Live By, which was published in 1980. And it explained how Cartesian and dualistic tenets in Western thought were incorrect. When we say things like, that went over my head, or I'm on top of it, we situate our bodies in this metaphor and how we understand and go through the world. Finally, on the left, we have Judith Butler and her ideas from Gender Trouble explain how the body is a site of identity production. These ideas relate to Foucault and how knowledge is produced and um, her work has been important in feminist and queer theories relating to the body. In the following section, we will analyze embodiment sociologically. As previously mentioned, the field of embodiment, much like sociology, is multidisciplinary and thus is an expanding field, a new frontier, if you will. Embodiment borrows concepts and research techniques from other fields such as sociology, philosophy, and psychology. The field of embodiment is uniquely positioned within this sociological landscape which enables researchers to understand broader social issues like gender identification. The fact that subfields are forming within sociology illustrates the versatility of the field and its importance. 
The field of embodiment also helps people contextualize their experiences and the environment. In other words, it helps them make sense of the world around them. Most embodiment research is conducted by academia and is subjective and highly personalized. There are three main theories found in embodiment. One, the theory of embodied cognition created by J.J. Gibson. Gibson was an American psychologist and is pictured on the left. Embodied cognition theory states that the mind is influenced by and influences the body. Embodied cognition theorists stress the importance of the body's role in cognition and development. The second theory found in embodiment is the concept of body techniques by Marcel Moss. Moss, pictured on the right, was a French sociologist. He defines body techniques as any learned bodily action that reflects culture or reinforces it. In short, culture is embedded into a physical motion. For example, hand gestures vary in different cultures. The okay hand gesture in America is taken differently in Brazil and is very offensive. Lastly, Merleau-Ponty's phenomenological approach to understand embodiment is still used today. Ponty emphasized the idea that the body was crucial in understanding the world. In essence, the body and mind are intertwined. How can sociology help to answer questions in the field of embodiment? Sociology is uniquely positioned to offer resources from its sociological toolkit, such as the sociological imagination, keeping the sociological tradition of using a mixed method research approach, a variety of perspectives from many fields, and its multidimensional approach. A few examples of some of the big questions asked in embodiment stem from the theory of embodied cognition. One, what is the task to be solved? Two, what are the resources that the organism has access to in order to solve the task? Three, how can these resources be assembled so as to solve the task? And four, does the organism in fact assemble and use these resources? The main research method used in embodiment research is a mixed methods approach, meaning researchers use both qualitative and quantitative research techniques. An example of qualitative research are semi-structured interviews where the researcher gains in-depth knowledge on the topic, whereas quantitative research methods seek statistical significance and use thematic analysis. Thematic analysis starts with a data set and codes the information to identify themes. Now that we have a background on the theories, theorists, and research methods used for the field, let's look more closely at the prominent works in embodiment. The ecological approach to visual perception was written by J.J. Gibson. His theory of embodied cognition is at the forefront of his work, using vision as a lens to understand human experiences. The Oxford Handbook of the Sociology of Body and Embodiment lays the groundwork for basic knowledge within the field. Additionally, the text follows the embodied cognition theory closely, arguing that bodies are shaped and therefore shape human society. Last, the book Journeys of Embodiment at the Intersection of Body and Culture takes a feministic approach to explore social interactions. Leading practitioners in the field encompass a wide array of types of practice. We have academia, we have consulting, we have different topics such as uh, gender, race, and class. 
and though most practitioners are situated in academia as professors or associate professors, there are others who are consultants, writers, health promoters, etc. Here we see Anna Akbari with her book, Start Up Your Life. She's a former professor of sociology, as I mentioned, and is now a consultant, writer, and stylist. She's been featured in Time, The New York Times, Forbes, The Atlantic, and other media outlets. And I think she provides a great example of how sociology can be used in the real world. It can be applied sociology in ways that we might not think about. How we present ourselves, our style, our clothing, she emphasizes to teach people how we move in this world matters and how people perceive us matters. Next up is Kimberly K. Huang, and she's an associate professor of sociology and director of global studies at the University of Chicago. Her work is focused on embodiment in the context of sex workers in Asia and global marketplaces. Her book, Dealing in Desire, uses the methodology of ethnographies with uh, interviews of sex workers and ethnographies situated in those spaces to think about gender, how we construct it, financial deal making, and transnational political economic identities. It's won several awards and she's a very distinguished leader of the field. What does the future hold for research and embodiment? The American Sociological Association, also known as ASA, as recently as 2009 has created a new field within their organization, body and embodiment. In creating a new section, the ASA has awarded best publication and graduate student paper awards to foster academic discussion within the field. From the most recent academic literature, embodiment has sparked discourse about the following topics. Cosmetic surgery, racial issues, specifically the African American experience, immigration, capitalism, female social capital, gender, diet, and healthcare and access. The last three slides detail our references.